So we all know about this 60 amp hour lithium ion phosphate battery that I've done a few videos on and teardown videos. We looked at some faults with it. So we all know about this and you haven't seen this, have a look on my channel, I've got videos on this. But what I need to do is I need somewhere to put it. I need to have it somewhere safe. So it sits on my battery table, but everything is exposed. Now if I happen to drop something across these terminals, we can have a short, we can have a short in the BMS if something hits the BMS. It just needs somewhere to live and be safe and I can use the power out of it. So that's right. I went and did a bit of shopping at King's for somewhere to put this. So I went and picked myself up just one of these cheap battery boxes that we can put this in and make this a lot safer. And I can access the power from that battery through some Anderson plugs and some USB ports and so on. So I thought that would be a perfect opportunity to do a review video on this. Have a look at the battery box. Have a look at how it's wired, what I like, what I don't like about it. Just for your viewing pleasure. But wait, there's more because I also bought, well, a couple of extra little things when I was at King's. So let's quickly just duck outside here and I'll show you what else I got when I was at King's. That's a problem when you go to King's. Any Aussie bloke knows you go to King's for one thing, you come out with a whole heap more. Kind of like when you go to Bunnings. So look behind me here. We can see I have picked myself up two of the King's 200 watt panels. Now, these panels were going out at half price. I paid $99 for a 200 watt panel that is 50 cents a watt that is crazy pricing so we're going to do some testing on these panels at a later video this is not what this video is about but i thought i would show you these and show you what we've got coming up on the channel of testing these panels now i would like to do a test today but have a look at the sky there's no sun it's just overcast clouds so definitely not going to be able to do a test on these today right let's move on let's go back into the cabin and have a look at that king's battery box so this battery box is the bigger version to the small battery box that i run my little 40 amp hour battery in and i'm loving this battery box so well let's see if this battery box is going to perform the same so first up, let's go around and have a look at the features of it. So we have some terminals here, which we can hook an inverter on. So we've got two, two, two screw terminals here to hook an inverter on. We've got our main isolator on off switch here like that to turn the power on and off. We've got a digital voltmeter here, which is really not going to be any good for lithium batteries. So I am going to put in this uh, King's uh, battery monitor that I was given by a friend. He didn't want to use it, so he gave me that. So we're going to be putting that one in. We've got a breaker here for the uh, accessory ports on the back, which we're going to have a look at right now because these are the two accessory ports here. We've got USB ports, so we've got the... I can get this to focus, there we go, we've got the 1 amp and the 2.1 amp uh, USB type A uh, outputs for charging up devices and we've also got an accessories plug also known as the old cigarette lighter plug accessories port. Now on the top we have a couple of Anderson plugs here, so we've got one Anderson plug there and we've got another Anderson plug here. Okay, so what we're going to look at is we're going to flip the lid we're going to have a look at the inside because well that's the most important part of how this is going to run so i'm just going to remove this protective cover so we can see what is inside and well this is what we've got inside so i guess let's start with the cables that go onto the battery now these cables are pretty rigid so i think they're going to be copper cable inside those they've got a, a little bit of weight to them so I'm not going to cut them open to verify that, but they kind of feel pretty sturdy and potentially copper cable inside those. Now, the cable's not very thick. So even though this battery box here is going to fit a 120 amp hour battery or 100 amp hour 
uh, lithium battery inside that. I personally don't think that these cables are going to be thick enough to be able to carry 100 odd amps worth of current. So this battery box is not, in my opinion, going to be for one of those big batteries. It's going to be for a smaller battery, kind of like what we've got in there. So what we've got in there is going to be fine. So have a look at the ring terminals on the end of the cable here. The ring terminals, they're big enough to be able to go on most size batteries. The material, I feel, is a little bit on the thin side. So again, we're not going to be wanting to run big current through those, but for what I'm using, that is going to be more than adequate. So, and it's the same thing on the negative cable. So we'll follow that line down and we're going to run that through and it comes to this disconnect switch here. So the disconnect switch is just the common disconnect switch most battery boxes use. I've used these uh, connected uh, disconnect switches before and they seem to work fine. I haven't had any issues with them. So it goes through to our disconnect switch. Now in here, is our digital voltmeter. Again, we're not going to be worrying too much about that. We're going to leave it connected, but we're not going to be relying on that. We will be putting the shunt in. So this here is a little switch that you push in, which turns the digital meter on so we can see what our voltage readout is. So we move across to here. We have a, let's see if I can zoom in, get this phone to actually do what it's supposed to do. And you can see exposures. There we go. Get, get there we go. 10 amps. So it's a 10 amp resettable breaker. So there it is there, sorry about the sake of footage. So that 10 amp resettable breaker is for our USB ports and our uh, 12 volt output plugs, which are here. So the USB ports and the plug. So the wiring here, yeah, it seems for, for, for these, the wiring seems more than adequate for what these are going to be doing. These plugs here, I've dealt with them before. I haven't had any issues, so uh, I can't complain about any of that. Now, the power also goes across to these output ring terminals here. Sorry, output terminals here. The little screw on ones there. That is not fused. And that's the negative one there. We can see it comes straight off the battery, straight into there, and that is not fused. I don't feel that is a huge problem. You could probably put a fuse, which I have anyway. Uh, I have this fuse here on the output line on that battery. So it's going to protect it if it uh, decides to short out. So uh, maybe put a fuse on that. So moving on to something that I'm not overly keen about is when it comes to these Anderson plug and the cabling on that. So... The cabling to these Anderson plugs run through these um, fuses, these uh, standard blade fuses. Everyone that watches my channel should know that I'm not a fan of these once they exceed 15 amps. Now, an Anderson plug, as a general rule, has a 50 amp output. So if you're going to plug something into these Anderson plugs you're going to potentially think you're going to be wanting to run 50 amps. So will this cable handle 50 amps? Well, potentially the cable may handle 50 amps, but these connectors won't handle 50 amps. Now, if we have a look in here, they've used, come on, phone, focus, there we go. They've used 30 amp fuses. So it's going to trip out at uh, just a bit above 30 amps of continuous use. And yes, I know fuses don't trip out exactly at their rated uh, amperage. They, there is delays, but we're not going to cover that. So 30 amp fuses, I'm not keen on that. Anything over 15 amps, I find we start getting overheating. So this is potentially, in my opinion, a weak point if you're going to start drawing higher currents out of those Anderson plugs and we're going to you've got a potential of overheating these and melting these and having a potential fire so just be mindful of these fuses I've covered this in other videos it's no reflection of kings themselves it's just this style of fusing I don't like personal thoughts 
So looking at the box itself, the casing itself, it's it's fairly thick plastic. It's it's look for for what it's going to do. I don't think there's going to be a problem with this uh, plastic at all. It, it'll work just fine. There is like a little um, insert here that you can move up and down depending on the size of the batteries. So it kind of looks like this is designed for the bigger batteries. But again, I would be a little bit concerned about running higher current through some of that cabling in there. So just bear in mind, these inserts, they're great if you're using a higher capacity battery. Just limit the current flow and take advantage of your amp power for long running times. Let's get this shunt here. I'm going to install that and let's get this hooked up and get it up and running. A few moments later. So I have the battery monitor installed in the battery box and I have it wired up so when I turn the power off it doesn't supply power to the meter. Therefore we don't have parasitic loads slowly draining our battery away. So we turn that on and then everything uh, lights up just nicely. So let's have a look inside and let's have a look how I've done that with that battery meter. So just coming on this side, we'll lift off the lid. Now, one thing I've noticed with all battery boxes that I've used, even the battery power stations, these leads are not long enough. The main battery leads are not long enough to be able to sit the lid down on a table. So you've got to pop the lid up. I'm using an old power station here. So you've got to pop the lid up. So battery menu, well, battery box manufacturers, if you give us some a little bit longer leads, we'd be able to get our lids out of the way to service our battery. So I've got the battery monitor hooked up through the shunt. Now, the way I have this shunt hooked up is I've just got it zip tied to this um, a cross brace rail here because I don't have half the components. When I was given this, it was missing a lot of the mounting brackets and that. So we kind of make did with that, but it works just a treat. So the main line, I have it hooked up to the battery like this. Now I've got multiple layers of insulation on this and then wrapped up with the red tape. Inside there is a fuse. It is one of these fuses. So that is a 60 amp fuse that's inside here just to protect our battery. So our negative line comes up in through the shunt as you normally do with a shunt and then continues out onto our negative post over there. Now our line that powers the shunt, because all shunts need an active line to power them. So this line here, I've got it going through a little, if I can get this out of the way, a little three amp, come on phone, focus, there you go. A little three amp fuse and just hooking it up to the main isolator switch there. So it's just got a little bit of extra protection with this three amp fuse going to the shunt. So should anything go wrong with the shunt and we have overcurrent or, or a short or something, we can pop that fuse and we're not gonna be melting anything under the box here. And of course our data cable comes up into the back of our uh, meter as well. It's not the most tidiest um, of uh, constructions. I know people like uh, tidy. I generally like good cable management, but this is our test system. So this lid's gonna be on and off all the time. And I've got it designed so the lid can come off and I can test individual cell voltages because this battery is what we need to look at and keep an eye on. And I do need to somehow brace this battery into the corner i haven't done that yet but for now this is good enough and it is going to do the job one thing i did have to do too i will mention the bracing here uh the battery divider i ended up zip tying that on because that wanted to keep coming off every time i lifted the lid so a little bit of uh changing around of a few things all right let me get this strapped up and let's plug some things in it and let's see it working in action. So we have some devices plugged into our battery box and we're gonna give it a run through its paces. So what we have is we have this little mini power station here 
that can be plugged in and charged up through this little mini plug here that goes into there and then that is fed from our accessories plug one of those we also have a tablet with the a USB charger coming in through that charging port now I have an inverter that I've got going out of the Anderson plug I do not recommend running an inverter off an Anderson plug this is just my test inverter for testing so I have an Anderson plug on it I would be connecting an inverter through these terminals so use these terminals don't use the Anderson plug so what we're going to do is we're going to turn our power on like that we're going to have a look and see what fires up so our inverters turned itself on let's turn the fan on pull some current let's go high speed with that we've got 80 oh sorry fans gonna blow noise on that uh, recording here we've got 80 watts going into my power station we've got well our batteries fully charged on the tablet here so we probably don't have very much current going into the tablet We'll turn the fan back on again and we're going to have a look to see how much current we're, we're pulling out of that battery. We'll come around here. So there's our battery voltage. Let's have a little bit of a play around here to see. So we've got 10 amps getting drawn out of the unit all up, uh, which is 133 watts. Our 60 amp hour battery that's in there, temperature sensor is not hooked up. Um, yeah, there we go, 13 volts. So we've just scrolled through the whole setting. So it's giving us quite a bit of information through there. If you can uh, want to pause the video to check out any of that in any longer detail, go ahead and do that. So everything seems to be working here on our battery box. So what are my thoughts on the battery box? I'm going to turn this off so it doesn't screw up my audio. So for this battery box, for the price, like I said, it was cheaper. I think I paid $50 for it, $59 for it, and I did get an accessory plug as well or a cable as part of the package in that price. It was cheaper than that battery box when I bought that battery box. So for low current devices for running low wattage inverters running some charging for uh, laptops and other things and some low current devices out of the anderson plugs i think it's pretty good value for money and the cabling inside it will handle low current devices if you're wanting to draw high current out of this battery box I don't feel it is the right battery box for you. You need to have something with heavier duty cable and potentially a little bit more heavier duty construction so it can take the weight of the bigger battery. So bear in mind when you're buying this low current devices, I'm going to give it a thumbs up for that application. Well, there you have it. There is the King's battery box and my thoughts on what type of applications that would be good for so if you like the video give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below now here's a little disclaimer if you're one of these trolls that like going around youtube looking for videos on king's gear so you can beat up on king's gear don't leave a comment below because i have a zero tolerance to trolls on my channel now with a lot of other youtubers are doing the same thing it's not acceptable it's childish and we're not going to tolerate it and keep an eye up on a future video coming because we are going to look at these king's 200 watt panels going to look at their construction how they are we're going to do some tests on them and see how they run for giving us our off-grid power so stay tuned for the next awesome video that'll be coming out on the off-grid channel.